I, I personally believe that it's really important to keep to keep that tradition, and especially when you have um, masterworks by by such transformative artists. I think it's it's you know it should be celebrated at every opportunity, um, and the big classical ballets are are a really great um, opportunity to keep that tradition and to to, to because I think I think what Nureyev has you know um, means to us as an artist is really profound but also um those works will continue to sort of as i said challenge and inspire and elevate um companies that continue to perform them good morning nehemiah it's so lovely to meet you here on zoom Thank you. Thank you. It's it's great to be here. <laughs> so you're in London at the moment. Uh, yes, I'm in London, um, working from my home, <laughs> and um, it's uh, we're just preparing. We're in the final weeks before we go to Japan um, for a, a gala that I'm directing, and um, so so lots to do, <laughs> and um, mm, lots it's an of preparation. Production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me about this this gala that you're doing. Um, well, we a, a very good friend of mine from from ballet school, uh, Canada's National Ballet School. We we studied together, we lived together. Um, he he moved to Japan um, a few years ago, and in the northern part of Japan, a, a, a city called Akita, which is famous for for its rice and its sake and all the wonderful foods. Um, and they have a, they have a new theater. And so he asked if I would, um, help him put together a gala featuring dancers of the Royal ballet. And so then I thought, well, it'd be really interesting to, to select repertoire that kind of, um, you know, from, from, the extraordinary history tradition of the Royal Ballet. So, um, and so, he, so we started developing it, started thinking about it a few years ago. And, um, just last summer, it, it's, you know, it started to really take shape. And, um, now we're sort of weeks, weeks away. Mm-hmm. It's really exciting. <laughs> but it's, it's a long process that the planning part of it. You know, it's not something you you uh, whip up in a month or two. <laughs> well, you know, I think every every gala performance, every project has its own sort of lifespan, and some can come together really very quickly. Um, but there are always different, you know, considerations. So, in this case, um, we're going to a, a brand new theater. We're going to a part of Japan. Um, that that doesn't typically have this sort of um, this type of, of gala performance. Certainly, uh, featuring you know, some of the incredible dancers that, that we're bringing and, and in the repertoire that we're bringing. Um, so so and and you know so we we really took our time to develop it and to um, communicate with with the theater. We're also we have another city we're going to Sapporo, which is more, uh, which regularly welcomes large scale ballet companies. And so it's a little bit more straightforward, but, um, but, but it's been nice to sort of develop it over time as well. I think it, it really benefits from that. And, um, and I'm, I'm excited about the program from, from, Coppelia, you know, which was a ballet that Nanette Tavalwa brought to the company, to Chroma by Wayne McGregor, and um, more recent works by Valentino Zucchetti, and a world premiere by Krista McNally, uh, and of course, the big classical pas de deux, Don Quixote and Le Corsaire. So, so we really get to show the broad range of the artists in the program. Um, present wonderful ballets, wonderful music. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. 
Well, it sounds like a great program and it's so great that you keep the the classical works as well, you know, that you you keep, uh, have that also in the program because I think it's so important that, uh, and, and that's what the audiences love as well. Well, it, and the dancers love performing the the, the, the grand pas de deux and, um, you know, they're thrilling and they're, what I, what I really enjoy about the way the Royal Ballet dancers perform the Corsair or Don Quixote um, is, is that, especially in the summertime, or if they're, there's sort of a gala situation, they can, they can really um, interpret it in a way that they, that they're, you know, that, that keeps it alive and keeps it exciting for them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, so, so I like to give, you know, obviously allow for that, that freedom, um, and really trusting them. But, but I think that that sort of energy and exuberance, it really, you know, when the dancers are excited, the audience is excited. It, it's just, it's yeah. just a wonderful sort of feedback loop. And, mm -hmm. and, um, so, so, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how, how, the audience, especially in Akita, um, receive receive these dancers because I I, I expect it's going to be. Uh, I'm excited for them. <laughs> yeah, amazing. But you've just um, also recently uh, been a, a principal dancer of the Royal Ballet, and you've recently retired. I mean, 2019, I think I read that you retired. So, do you enjoy um, being on the other side now? I mean, you, you've always been the dancer, but, uh, or do, are you also still dancing? Um, well, when I retired and, uh, from the stage and I, and I really sort of selected that language, <laughs> yeah. I, I said, I'm, I'm retiring from the stage. I think I, you know, as a dancer, I had a wonderful career, the type of career that. I would have, you know, only dreamed about and um, got to dance with wonderful companies and work with wonderful people. Um, and when it was time, you know, I, I, I think when it, when it was time for me to stop dancing, it was really it was really time for me to continue working with, you know, specifically classical ballet, and um, but in a different way, and and to sort of to sort of really kind of make that transition and not look back. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I will always be a, a dancer, mm -hmm. <laughs> certainly, I think. Um, but that's always, that's an important part of, of who I am and, and what mm -hmm. shaped me. But um, I, I, I enjoy working on the other side. I enjoy supporting dancers, first and foremost. Um, and if I can help them realize, you know, wonderful performances first, you know, fundamentally, and um, help them enjoy enjoy projects. It's, it's been sort of kind of a hallmark of a lot of the projects I've, I've directed or been involved in since leaving the stage is, has been really to, um, Try, try and support the dancers to to really uh, give them an opportunity to, to have a wonderful experience and, and a great performance and enjoy it, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but do you look at the career or do you look at dancers or do you look at ballet in a different way than you did when you were a dancer? Well, it's interesting because... Um, Immediately after I after I um, finished performing mm -hmm. and and re retired, I I went to study arts administration and cultural policy at Goldsmiths University of London. And so, what it did was, I suppose, in terms of changing how I look at dance, mm -hmm. um, it just it really made me more aware of of everything that's involved in making it possible for dancers to, you know, to do what they love. And, and, um, so, 
you know, all the departments in, in, in large organizations that, that are all working towards a common goal, but also, um, you know, the, the, the government policies that support that and make it possible, um, private sec, private involvement, um, all of these things that, that are, are, are critical to, to making what, what we do, um, possible. And, you know, developing a greater appreciation, of course. Um, and I think it's extraordinary that so many talented people are, are committed to, to, um, supporting the, the art form that we love so much. Yeah, because you, you mentioning now the, the administration part of it, because that's also a, a part that, that, uh, as a dancer, you don't always realize that. So you have to, you you think of your artistic career, but you don't think of what goes on behind the scenes for you to to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's lots of there's lots of interesting artistic um, sort of opportunities mm-hmm. uh, at every level. I I, I think, um, and so that makes it really exciting because. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one of the things in, in sort of taking on independent production work is, is really getting hands on with or involved, um, with all the different components of, of a production. And, um, again, working with, with really talented people and, and sort of learning and, and kind of, you know, the more, the more I'm sort of, collaborating with people in different aspects, whether it's marketing or whether it's um, the creation of the, of the, the program book, uh, for example, um, you know, it's not only, you know, interesting to watch people produce what they do, but, but it's, it's, it's really inspiring to, to be involved in that and to appreciate at a different level. Um, And, and yeah, so so I, I it, having left it, it I, having stepped away from the stage in my own career and sort of looked more broadly at at all of the the things that that need to happen to make to make a perform to put a performance on stage, certainly increased my appreciation for all of the, <laughs> all of the incredible <laughs> work that people do. It's, it's quite yeah. extraordinary. Well, you can also now. Um... I think uh, you mentioned when you do these projects that you you give the dancers also that little bit of freedom because you understand what it is to be a dancer. I, I you know, I, I understand also what it's like to um, perform with lots of pressure and yeah. uh, and that you know it's that's exciting and it's wonderful as an artist. It's a privilege to have that pressure to. To perform at a high level and i think when you know certainly with with this performance in japan it's it's to kind of um you know relax a lot of that pressure allow allow some freedom allow uh and 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 i think the summertime is a perfect opportunity to have a sort of um a looser feel uh which mm-hmm. and and because of course I, I trust the artists entirely, um, but I think it, it just brings a different dimension to the to the performance um, by allowing that space. And um, b- because I, I certainly uh, recognize, you know, the amount of pressure that in a long season that artists put themselves under, whether whether you know those expectations are external or not. I think they're never as high as the sort of internal expectation an artist has of themselves. So, so just allowing a you know, sort of a looser feel and hopefully that, that sort of, you know, a joyous performance, you know, I, I, it, it's just, you know, I, I think it's a good space for, for, for that. Mm. But you've also done this amazing Nuri of Gala that I read about in Drury Lane in the theater. So tell me about that. How, why is specifically Nuria? Oh, well, um, the, the, that was a really a, an enormous 
um, enormous production and um, it, it was a lot of dedication from a lot of people and um, I think celebrating Nureyev is is something that um, we, we you know fun you know we should, we should all celebrate Nureyev every opportunity we have mm -hmm. as dancers because I, I really think he 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 elevated classical ballet in a way that that nobody else has and I think we all um owe a lot I, I certainly owe a lot of my um my dancing career to the inspiration um that that Nureyev provided me but also um he inspired so many people who were sort of um very important at every stage of my career and um so celebrating Nureyev to me it was it was really something that that seemed so obvious and it was something i was so fixated on <laughs> really it was just an obsession that that this is something that that needed to happen it was a um and it was uh, such a privilege to be able to spend a few years really just learning about Nerea, focusing on Nerea, um, thinking about ways of, of, of celebrating him that's, that, that would resonate here in London, um, but also have, you know, connections internationally. Um, and, you know, looking back, it, it was something that I sort of pinched myself. I, I really think it was a privilege to be able to um, celebrate Rudolf Nureyev. And, and of course, it was a lot of hard work from a lot of really uh, incredible people. Um, and and we did it at a time that that there were there were challenges. Of course, um, we we be, we began during the pandemic. Um, a really building the production um sort of all the logistics of the production um but it but it really is was a culmination of sort of a lifetime of up to this point of really? my experience mm -hmm. in dance and and um wanting to wanting to celebrate somebody i consider just uh you know um exceptional on a level that i you know I think there are very few people in history, <laughs> let alone artists, let alone ballet dancers. So, um, no, I, I, I think it, it, it's something that that was was so deeply meaningful to me, and I and I think we had we we connected. Um, you know, I'm glad. I, I think it was something very important to do. But do you think uh, because it's now? Um sort of also important to allow young choreographers to show their work and and um but do you think it's also important for theaters to to keep these works these masterworks really uh these classical works and and like him his work Nuria's work that they specifically keep that because of uh also what that brings out of the dancers Nurev's choreography is, is a challenge for, for every dancer. And um I I think with every generation it, it doesn't it doesn't get easier. I I performed Nurev's Sleeping Beauty and I performed his um the third act Raimonda here in London. Um but you know it, it I, I personally believe that it's really important to keep to keep that tradition and especially when you have um masterworks by by such transformative artists i think it's it's you know it should be celebrated at every opportunity um and the big classical ballets are are a really great um opportunity to keep that tradition and to to, to because i think i think what nureyev has you know um, means to us as an artist is is really profound but also um those works will continue to sort of as i said challenge and inspire and elevate 
um, companies that continue to perform them. Um, and so, so I, I, you know, I, and I think they're wonderful. That not only I think we sometimes we focus too much, well, appropriately uh, on the choreography and the challenges and and the artistry, but I think the the productions themselves are fabulous. You know, um, the set designs and and they so. I mean, we we have you know costumes assessed by Georgiadis in in, in certain um, productions. The National Ballet of Canada um, continues to perform the production using his sets and costumes of Sleeping Beauty. Um, and one of the things when I was really reading different people commenting about Nureyev and in, in researching for the project um, was you know talking about Nureyev as a producer. Um, about how you know he was famously uncompromising in the dance studio um but he also really collaborated at the same level with the sets and costume um mm-hmm. every every aspect of of the production um he he you know really worked at the highest level and i th- i think it's it, it, it's re- it was just a like i said a privilege and the most inspiring period of my life to, really? you know, as an artist to, to, to kind of learn more and um, mm-hmm. you know in, in, in preparation it was really really fantastic I think it's still processing <laughs> what, really? we, what we achieved <laughs> here in London so yeah amazing but I read also that he was very flamboyant and that he was also you know he dressed very uh, sort of flamboyantly and uh, maybe that's also uh, how his productions are a little bit well it, there's there's um certainly a, a, a an attention to to detail and mm-hmm. all of these um beautiful fabrics and you see that um certainly in the way he dressed but also in 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 the set design and the mm-hmm. costumes and um yeah I, I i you know there were there were, there were lots of people who who obviously knew Nureyev personally um and so with with the production it, it was you know i i wanted to give people space who who knew them who knew who knew Nureyev to to really be able to tell a little bit of their story, um, their relationship with Maria. Mm-hmm. Um, but but for me it was really important to celebrate what he what he represents to dancers mm-hmm. of my generation who may not have had the opportunity to meet him, but were certainly in, in you know, um oh a huge debt of gratitude and so yeah, it, it, as I said, I I, I think it, it it's just hard to certainly hard to quantify what Nureyev means um and it was a privilege to celebrate Nureyev and Amazing. something I, I I think we'll we'll continue doing for well, sure well well congratulations for what you've achieved and and that you put that up and and also with you say with all the restrictions that we had also after the pandemic that that uh, makes it more impressive what you've achieved <laughs> but now um you also you also busy with intensive programs you you also have um a, a company that you or you, you you teach so mm. tell me about this uh, these intensive programs that you do we just um we started uh we call it the Royal Intensive Training. So dancers from the Royal Ballet um, teaching short intensive programs and um, really in in America. And I started, I went back to my my home state, uh, Michigan. Uh, for the first one, we partnered with the Detroit Opera House um, to present it at, at the Opera House. And I think um, it, uh, there's a lot of different um, 
inspirations for 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 beginning this and primarily um you know it was it was kind of these intensive programs that that gave me exposure to the professional dance world when i was um young and and growing up in michigan and some of those larger intensive programs have have left the state but there is a huge amount of talented dancers in 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 certainly in michigan but uh, throughout america throughout north america um and so you know ultimately the idea was to 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 start in detroit and then maybe to see opportunities if we could take this to other parts of america whether it's major um cities or um some other midwestern capitals that that don't necessarily have exposure to to work with um dancers certainly from the royal ballet um and so that that was really kind of the inspiration for it and you know it it is again reaching out to i i i i researched how many dance studios there are in michigan and wanting to reach out to um as many people as possible to to let them know that we're we're holding this at the detroit opera house and the number it was it was wonderful to see the number of dance studios there are mm -hmm. in in the state of michigan um which really which really sort of um shows how important dance is and how how uh, how many students are are training in, in ballet um so it's it's uh yeah it was it was fun and and it's something i hope we can we will continue to do i, I expect we will yeah because with uh, dance and specifically ballet you have to start at a young age and and you have to uh, go through this uh training this quite intensive training to to get the technique um but how much do you think in these uh, you doing these intensive training courses so you you basically working with young uh, students who have this um uh, or are the ability but also the dream to become a dancer but how much do you think uh the importance should be more on uh, the the artistry you know mm -hmm. than rather than technically getting these young dancers perfect or, or aiming to get them perfect but that there's more um more sort of um what do you say attention on giving to the to the artistic uh, expression of ballet mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you say um, whether you know the idea of, of focusing on on perfection or or artistry. It's I think uh, you know as a as a dancer uh, as a professional dancer we 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 know that perfection is something that you're, doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, it's something you're always striving towards and and um, sort of the unattainable goal. So one of the things that I, I i personally like to do and it is to really focus on um giving dancers uh, um different things to think about so you know whether it's a breath in the arms or opposition or 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 moving i think you know a lot of the dancers who 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 came to us to train they have wonderful they already have wonderful training and and really they they're where they need to be at the at the age they um at their specific age and we were working with kids between the ages of 11 and 18 and um so at that point they they really had a kind of a strong fu fundamental technique and so so for me what the thing i'm really interested in is just giving an opportunity again to to free up to loosen up um remind them that ballet is not you know yes it's a serious art form but we're we're dancing we're moving we're breathing um yeah. and um so so by again focusing on on 
whether it's the breath in the port of bra, the opposition in the body, um, uh, placing the weight in the, the weight in the in the right in the place to make it possible to move quicker or to move freer. Um, I do like I like the idea of finding freedom in classical ballet technique. So, uh, which which sometimes it, I think it's perfectly natural that that um, because there's that focus on that sort of unachievable perfection <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that we that that it sort of sometimes can limit that freedom, mm -hmm. um, which then limits the expression. And so so just giving again more space to to uh, to focus on on ballet as movement um, because I, th I think that's what really translates translates as a professional dancer um, uh, being able to do to be able to act naturally while doing classical ballet technique is is you know really kind of the challenge <laughs> to yeah. make to make a, a a classical variation that that has all these you know technical um elements but to be able to make it look like it's totally natural and and um so then so then whatever the feeling whatever the mood of the music whatever the whatever the narrative of the work um it's then able to sort of translate to the audience by by doing it in a way that that's that's really really quite natural um and that's not an easy thing and that's why we my dancers train every day so um so we you know of course we focus on on some very fundamental technical things that that dancers will focus on from their first ballet class to yeah. their last performance as a professional um some of those things never change but but um but just Again, again, finding finding some freedom, finding uh, freedom in the movement, and and um, you know what allows what what makes that easier, more accessible, you know, easier to access that freedom within that that framework is is something that I I, I think is that I enjoy trying to communicate uh, mm -hmm. to dancers. But now you're saying you're giving back, so you started in Michigan. And what age were you when you started doing ballet? Oh, the ballet. Um, I, I started dancing. I, I, I don't know. I must have been seven or eight years old. And I like most, um, well, I, I don't know most dancers, but certainly I think in North America, boys tend to, um, you know, go to dance to whether it's jazz or tap um, and and it's just a little bit more accessible <laughs> than, oh, okay. than arriving and putting on ballet tights but um I I think I ballet was what I really wanted to do um and so I did jazz and tap for a couple of years and and was competing in wonderful studio wonderful dance teacher um and and then people started commenting oh well to improve he needs he needs to start ballet it'll help his jazz mm -hmm. technique and so that was that was sort of my pathway into battle oh, okay. and, and once somebody said that i i was sort of like yes <laughs> okay <laughs> i needed that that input to to then um you know to then to do it. but what was it about ballet that uh that you wanted to do it i mean can you remember what uh, did you see a ballet that you thought okay this is what i want to do i i yeah i think i think there were i i had this kind of romantic idea of ballet these these you know these european studios with the hardwood floor oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think a lot of that comes from films like white nights and, and sort of oh, okay films of the early 80s with Baryshnikov and, and um and so uh yeah it was in and i liked i i liked the physicality of it it was it was you know i i really connected with the physicality of male dancing um at the time and 
so so yeah it was you know it, it was something i really enjoyed and then of course when i went to audition for for professional ballet school and i went to canada's national ballet school and they have this this wonderful building with studio ab that that's now been converted for a different use but um it had the hardwood floors it had the big windows really? <laughs> uh, it, it was a, an old sort of quaker uh hall that that was converted to a, a studio many many years ago um and oh, it just amazing. had all of that european romanticism that i oh. associated with with classical ballet and so i was you know i thought well this this is the place for me um a dream come true oh absolutely That's how you envisioned it amazing yeah um well it was it, <laughs> it was um there wasn't a whole lot of 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 a vision there i think i i sort of oh, okay. we lucked into the right place that that, <laughs> that really resonated with me <laughs> okay um, you were drawn <laughs> yeah. yeah but that was amazing so and how did you end up then um at the royal ballet um well you know it, again it was sort of a a, a long <laughs> winding path and um, I danced for many years with National Ballet of Canada after I graduated from the school and um, started working. Uh, I, I think there were certain repertoire of the World Ballet that we had in the company that that I really, really connected with. And, um, and I also started guest performing with some artists who were, who were dancers at the World Ballet. Um, and but I went to, I, I joined the Royal Danish Ballet uh, when Nikolai Huba became artistic director. And he was, you know, an extraordinary person to work with as well. Just great ballet master. And um, I had two really fabulous seasons at uh, Royal Danish Ballet. And in my second season, I, I came to London and um, spoke with, Dame Monica Mason, who was then the artistic director, and sort of there was there was an opportunity to come and work with the company. So um, it, it all happened kind of very very naturally in a way. It just mm -hmm. um, it was something that was, was a dream of mine, but but uh, and and I think I was very fortunate. I think it was. A lot of good timing <laughs> really? but, uh, but of course a lot of hard work and um but and how important is it for a, a dancer to go to different companies do you think do you think everybody should um tr you know try to go to different companies or stay at a company and work yourself up i i think it was important for me um mm -hmm. And it's, you know, everybody has their, you know, their individual um, pathway and, and what works best for them as artists. And I, you know, I just wanted, to, you know, I really wanted to to explore. I really wanted to experience working in Europe and, and um and it's it's different, you know. The National Ballet of Canada. I, I couldn't have asked for for a more supporting environment to work to work in, and and I had wonderful repertoire and incredible, extraordinary people to work with. And um, but there was, you know, I wanted to experience what it'd be like, feel like to work in a in an opera house, where rather than having um, seasons and rehearsal periods. That is just sort of a continuous flow of performing right. and working on different works, and um, so that was that was also a big challenge and a big a major transition for me um, because it's a very different way of working. And um, but but it was also it was also really really sort of uh, exciting. kept It kept things fresh and um, and yes, yeah, so. so I, I, I think it's important as artists to 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 sort of experience different ways of working, whether that means in your summers going and 
um, taking classes somewhere. It doesn't necessarily mean that leaving a uh, change in companies is for everybody or, um, and I, and I think there are so many, I, I think the, the benefits of really working with, with one company for one's entire career, um, you know, that that's, that's just something that I didn't, I didn't experience as a dancer, but I, but I can recognize how, how incredibly fulfilling that must be. So, um, so yeah, I, I think as artists, we just we find our own our own pathway that that, yeah, that keeps us inspired. Mm. But now, Naimaya, what's your wishes for the future? My wishes, oh, um, I, I think I, you know, I, I, I think I, I I am very interested in directing. It's something I've been. You know, even even directing the galas, I really enjoy programming and and hopefully bringing bringing something interesting or slightly different or to to that to that format of, of presenting um, gala works. I, I think it would be really, you know, I, I would love to work again in a major um, organization, um, and so. You know, I, I'm, I'll continue creating and, and continue teaching and create, continue coaching, um, and and just remain open to to possibilities and opportunities, um, because you know, wonderful things just sort of, you know, when you're open to things, they, they tend to present yeah. themselves. So, um, but, but but I'm super active, so <laughs> it, 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 it's nice mm -hmm. to stay active around ballet. Sure. And and you you st you enjoy this uh, transition from the dancer to to doing this these productions. I I, I enjoy, um, you know, trans transitioning is I, I think never never easy. But what what's interesting about it is you're just it, you're suddenly um, taking on new challenges and. Mm -hmm. You know that's always a learning opportunity, and so in that way, it's it's you know, in some some things are are take more time, <laughs> but but I I I I like the challenge. You know, mm. I have to say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But amazing the things you do. I mean, it's it's wonderful, and um, you know that you that you create. I think this is. It's amazing that you do that. No, oh, thank you. That's mm. very kind. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was so great to talk to you, and um, really, I I admire your work, and and especially this Nureyev Gala that you did that I read about, and um, congratulations again with that. And I really wish for you that. Like your wish um, when you were a child uh, to to be in this uh, hall, the studio with the wooden floors, that you that <laughs> that all your other wishes also come true. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> it's been great.